You're going to be turning 75. You redefine what that means. As you reach each milestone age, I want to know what a impact, if any, does the number have on you? I don't think about my life in terms of numbers. First of all, I ain't never going to be old because I ain't got time to be old. I can't stop long enough to grow old. <laughs> I'm just going to be the best I can be at whatever age I am. And I bet you I won't look much different when I'm 95 if I live that long because I'm like the Gabor sisters. I'm going to look like a cartoon. I'll have on the makeup. I'll look as young as my plastic surgeons will allow me. And it's like all in makeup and lighting and all that. But I think more than anything, it's about what comes from inside you. It's an attitude and, you know, you gotta shine from within. And sometimes that can make you feel young and make you seem young to other people. You know, I, what, I, what I love about you, every time I've ever talked with you over the years and you were on the Oprah show multiple times, you have never been one of those women who has been reluctant to talk about plastic surgery. Do you know how old you were when you first started getting plastic surgery? I think about 40. Really? I think I yeah. started, uh, yeah, I started thinking when I was about 40, I, uh, I need a few little nips and tucks and little pulls and sucks and whatever <laughs> we get, you know? Because I'm, I'm a firm believer, whatever it takes to make you feel better about yourself, if you've got the nerve and if you've got the money and, uh, you know, and you've got the need for it, if it's going to make you feel better about yourself, if you feel good about you, you can make people feel better about themselves because you feel good. And you so always I felt think... good. You always felt good. I remember, you know, obviously times have changed, but you obviously remember years ago when men on television would make jokes about your curvy figure, about your boobs, about your wigs, and you once told Barbara Walters that the joke was on them because you knew exactly what you were doing with your image. Were you ever hurt, though, by any of those jokes, or did you always know that you had created this image and that is that was a part of where you were headed. That was a part of your own marketing. Well, in my head, I knew where, uh, where I was headed because to me, I'm not a natural beauty and I was always, I wanted to be pretty. I, I was that backwards Barbie. I was, I was impressed with that. And I just always felt more inside than how I looked on the outside. So I really patterned my look after the town tramp in our, in our, hometown, the trollop, you know, the one that would kind of walk up and down the streets and get in a car and ride off for a few minutes, come back and get in another car. You know, we I didn't know anything about that part then. I just knew she was beautiful. She had all this beautiful blonde hair, red lipstick and makeup, tight short skirts and high heel shoes. And I just thought she was the prettiest thing I'd ever seen. So I kind of patterned my look after that. I always loved the Fredericks of Hollywood magazines. You know, that was just kind of, to me, how I felt like I wanted to look. So in the early days, uh, to answer your uh, first part of your question, I think it used to bother me that, you know, when people, well, I mean, it didn't, didn't change me. It didn't make me do it different. But I kind of get a little embarrassed sometimes if somebody made too much fun of it. But I, that was when I knew they didn't know who all I was. Mm -hmm. 